Hey guys, this is Painting with Sounds. Uh, this is where I provide free education for people wanting to learn the craft of uh, poetry. Um, and right now we are doing a series in looking at the poetic meter of William Shakespeare's sonnets. If you do not know what poetic meter is, um, poetic meter is an organized rhythm. Uh, the poet strategically places certain words and syllables at key locations within a line to create a rhythmic effect. Um, the particular pattern that Shakespeare used is called iambic pentameter. Um, iambic pentameter is, uh, has, is a five beat li uh, line. It goes to dum, to dum, to dum, to dum, to dum. Okay, as we will see in, uh, see in the examples down below. Uh, a couple things that we've been talking about uh, that we've seen repeated in a lot of poems, so I'm going to just go over a couple uh, core ideas that we've seen. Uh, first is that uh, stress is relative. What this means is that a word that was assented or had a beat land on it in one line might not have a beat land on it in another line because it depends on what, what it's being compared to, right? Stress is relative. Um, the next thing is... Um, Another thing that we've seen is that uh, compound nouns, uh, with compound nouns, the first word takes the primary stress. We've seen quite a few of those, um, and this has gotten some people confused, uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, next, we've also talked about how um, rhetorical stress is stressing a word, word and sometimes a syllable for dramatic effect. This cannot be forced. Uh, it's usually, when we've seen it most, it's usually at, at the start of a question. Um, if we see an example in this, I'll point it out. Um, but it does not always occur in a poem. Um, and it, it leaves a lot of uh, some ambiguity over what the poet intended. It kind of leaves it to the, the, the person reading the poem to decide. Um, we've also talked about, um, I'll, I'll get into promotion in a little bit, but just when you have a um, light foot at the end of a line, um, it usually gets promoted. Um, now, we've also talked about, and we've seen in these poems, two common substitutions. The first is a trochi opening. This is where the first foot of the line opens with a trochi, which is a dum da, the opposite of an iambic. This is a common occurrence in iambic pentameter. I'm sure we'll see an example in this. And then we've also seen, well, not in every poem, so far two poems, are hypermetrical endings. This is where the line has a eleventh unstressed, or yes, unscented stressed syllable at the end of the iambic line. Uh, I do not believe, no, this poem I do not believe uh, has a hypermetrical ending. They're not, they're not that common in rhyming poetry. It's the more common in blank verse, which is iambic pentameter that has no rhyme to it. Um, so that is some of the key things that we've been talking about. Just a little review. Now, for those new, this is the really important part. Uh, the, in order to find the, the rhythm of a line, we have a three-step process. First, we highlight all the important monosyllable words. So those would be verbs, noun, adjectives, and adverbs. Um, and then step two, we look at all the multisyllable words and highlight the primary stress. If you do not, if you cannot say a, a multisyllable word and know which of the two syllables has the primary stress, then I suggest you look at a dictionary because it will tell you. And then we promote or demote. Promotion is where you have three light, light, light beats in a row. The middle one gets promoted to assented. And if you have three heavy, 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 the middle one gets demoted to unassented. Okay. So this is the three-step process that we do to uh, break down the rhythm of a line. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to read. Uh, this is Sonnet 9. I'm going to read through it. And then we're going to go line by line understanding the poetic meter of us, okay? <clears throat> Is it for fear to wet a widow's eye that thou consumes thyself in single life? Ah, uh, if thou issueless shalt hop to die, the world will wail thee like a makeless wife. The world will be thy window and still weep that thou no form of thee hast left behind when every private window, no widow well may keep by children's eyes her husband's shape in mind. Look, what an unthrift in the world doth spend, shifts but his place, for still the world enjoys it. But beauty waste hath in the world an end, and kept unused the user so destroys it. 
no love towards others in that bosom sits that on himself much murderous shame commits. All right, guys, let's break this down. Um, so the first line, is it for fear to wet a widow's eye? Um, so this is the first line. Um, so let's do, uh, let's do what we do. So step one, uh, we're going to highlight all the important monosyllable words. We have a few. We have fear, right? We have wet, cool, and then we have eye. Nice, right? Um, and then uh, step two, look at the multi-syllable words. We got one and hit the uh, primary stress, which is the wid and widow. Okay. And now do we have any promotions? We got one. We have a light. You can see right here, light, light, light. So the middle one here gets promoted. Okay. And then we break this apart. And we can see the pattern. Is it for fear to wet a widow's eye, right? And this, uh, when we scan this, this is Imba, 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 Imba. This is iambic pentameter, through and through, five ambers, no substitutions or variations. Pretty standard line, line right? Cool, right? Now we got the uh, next line that thou consumest thyself in single life. Um, so we have to ask ourselves, okay, step one, do we have any important uh, monosyllable words where well, we have life? And we have self, though sometimes self's a little dubious, uh, as we've seen in some poems. Um, but in this, we can do it. Um, now we have, okay, any multi-syllable words. Do we have any primary stresses where well, we have single and consume? Consumed. So it's this is the primary stress. And then with the sin and single is the primary stress. All right. All right. And then do we have any promotion? Well, we have one. That thou con, like light, light, light. So we promote that. Okay. And then we have our wonderful beat here. Look at that. That thou consumes thyself in single life. Right. So this is, again, I am big pretender. There's no, there's no crazy, no crazy, um, Crazy things going on, pretty simple. Uh, if thou issue list shalt hop to die. All right, guys. Um, it's the next line. So again, step one, do we have any uh, important uh, monosyllable words? We do, we have die, right? And then we have hap. Cool. Okay. Then we gotta say, okay, do we have any multi-syllable words? We have one, and it's the ish, an issue, cool. Um, now we have to ask, do we have any promotions? Let me break this apart just so we can see this word a little bit better, right? All right, so we have light, 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 so this middle one gets promoted, and then we have light, 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 so this middle one gets promoted. And if you look at that, if you break it, cool, so uh, if, Thou issue list shalt hap to die, right? So this is all iambic pentameter. Imba, Imba. Cool, right? So far, so good. Everything seems good. But I, I assure you there will be a few spots in this where this poem gets a little bit harder. Next line. The world will wail thee like a makeless life, wife. Oof. So step one, do we have any, uh, let's highlight all the important monosyllable words. Well, we got world, right? We got whale, that's a verb. We got wife, that's another noun. Okay, now step two, look at the primary stress and uh, multi-syllable word. Well, we have the make and makeless, right? And then we get asked, do we have any promotions? Well, we do. We have the like a, these are the only three light, light, lights in a row. So that gets promoted, okay? And then we break this apart. The world will wail thee like a makeless wife, right? I am a pretender. This poem is much easier than the last poem we scanned. The last poem we scanned, uh, number eight. Man, that, I mean, I, I had fun scanning that. Like that, there was a there was a particular line in there that stumped me for a minute. But it that is a much harder poem than this one to scan. It's probably written later, to be honest. Um, 
So next line, uh, the world would be thy window and still weep. All right, this one has a little bit more. This one might have a little bit more uh, things going on, but let's look at it, right? So step one, um, let's highlight all the important monosyllable words. We got world, right? That's a noun. We got weep. That's a um, that's a verb. Okay. Now let's look at any. We got one multisyllable word, so it's the wid and widow. Widow, right? Okay. Do we got any promotions? Well, we got will be thy. Okay. So we got the B, and then we got the do and still, so the end, right? Uh, some people might highlight this and make this at last for the double ionic. Uh, that is because this is part of a verb phrase. That would be totally acceptable. That would be 100% acceptable. Uh, but I'm going to keep it just for some of the newer people. I'm going to just keep this so we keep it on. When we get to when we get to something that's clearly a double ionic, I'll mark it. But if you mocked this as a double ionic, that is not that is not incorrect. If anyone has been following along, that would not I would not fault that. But anyways, we can still again. The world will be thy widow and still weep, right? So that is iambic pentameter. We have iamba. I'm all iambas. Iamba, iamba, iamba. Now this next line. This, this line, next line is getting cooler, right? That thou no form of thee hast left behind. Okay. So we gotta ask. Okay. Do we have any important? Uh, Monosyllable words. What we have um, left, we have no, which is an adverb. We have form, which is a, what well, could be an adjective too. Um, I think not is actually the adverb, but no is an adjective. I have to double check that. Um, but anyways, we got that. Um, so then we have to ask step two. Do we have any primary stresses? Uh, we do. We have this one right here, the hind and behind. Um, and then do we have any promotions? We have one of the has, so the the gets promoted. And then what's going on here? If anyone knew, this is called a double ionic. So this is totally acceptable. It's a light, light, heavy, heavy pattern that occurs. So it's um, just for later on, I'll, we'll get more into it, but there is a numbering system that goes with this. So it would be like this, guys. So you have the one, which is the weakest stress. You have the two. You have the three. Right. And you have the four. So you can see that thou no form. It, it rises in rhythm, right? Of thee has left behind, right? So when you mark this, it would look like this, guys. Um, I do it like this. Double ionic. And then it's imber, imber, imber. And remember, a double ionic is just a light imber. Uh, followed by a heavy imber. So you could, you could also do imber, imber, right? It's the same thing. It's just that this is a light imber, like a one, two. It's still an imber because the two is heavier than a one. Three, four. The four is heavier than a three, right? That's the, the, these are both the same. These, these, like these two equal. This equals that. It's just people are like evaluating a little bit different so just keep that in mind right anyways guys next line when every private widow well may keep okay guys so next thing is um looking for a, uh the important word we have one keep that's a verb okay then we got to do um the multi-syllable word so it's ev and then prive or pry and then we right and then you ask, do we have any, and I'll break this apart, so you can, do we have any uh, promotions? What we do, we have do, light, 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 so the well, because it's three lights in a row, gets promoted. And we break this apart. Again, it's uh, oops, pretty simply iambic pentameter. When every private wid or well may keep, right? Pretty pretty simple, guys. This poem is that, actually, this is probably a great poem for new person to scan great poem I might keep that in mind um so so far so good right guys so far so good we're all seeing this all right guys next line by children's eyes her husband shapes in mind okay guys so step one 
highlight all the important monosyllable words. Well, first we have eyes, cool. Then we have shape, right, which is another noun. Then we have another noun in mind. So we got that. And then we got step two. Do we got uh, we got a two multi-syllable words. So let's hit the primary stress. It's child and children, or ch yep. And then the hus and husband, cool. Um, and I, it should be obvious by now, but step, do we have anything that gets promoted? No. So then if you just break it apart, right? By children's eyes, her husband shape in mind, right? Pretty, pretty, I am with Tamra, guys. There's nothing, nothing extraordinary about this line. Pretty simple line to scan. Beautiful, right? Next line, look what an unthrift in the world doth spend. So this line, this line's a little bit more trickier, guys. This line's a little bit more, more trickier. So, but still, let's follow it. Step one, we're going to highlight all the important monosyllable words. So we have look, which is a verb. We have world, which is a noun. We have spend, which is a verb. Cool. Um, now, this is going to get a little tricky. Some of you might already see it. In unthrift, some of you are probably going to do the thrift. Okay, and this this is a, this would be a tricky. This would probably be the hard line of this poem so far. That is, so if you really, how to put this? If you did it like this, it would look like Shrochi, Anapist, Anapist, Imba, right? That, like, this is what somebody would scan, right? And this... You'd be like, oh man, that ain't right. I, I, what, what, I must have. You're gonna say I, I fucked up somewhere, right? Um, yes and no. So, do you remember how I said, um, and right here, rhetorical stress, stressing a word or syllable for dramatic effect cannot be forced. Okay. Well, um, I just, I gotta make this clear. This only works when I'm about to do in the negative. It never does it in the positive. So, on. That's the negative, right? Look, an unthrift in the world, right? That's what's going on. So now that you understand, we have to we have step one more step. We have a promotion. We have a light, light, light. So the in, okay. And this, like I said, this is probably a little this 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 line's a little advanced, right? But this is a um, so look, what an unthrift in the world doth spend. That is how he's saying it. This is a dramatic. Um, like I said, this is a very, very, very tough thing to say. Um, in fact, a lot—I don't know—a lot of people don't even know this, uh, which strikes me. Um, in the book, I—the book that taught me how of it, it is funny. I think this is a, something that should have been should be taught a little bit more. He has like a one, maybe like a one, like five sentence paragraph on this with a few examples, which I mean is cool that uh, he points it out. It's uh, Timothy Steele's. Um, all the funds and how you say a thing. I mean, that's cool, but I mean, I'm I'm spending more time right now explaining this to you guys than he does in the whole book. And I, I think this this is a this this would confuse a lot of new people uh, in meter. So just keep that in mind, right? And but this is a trochi too, right? We look what an unthrift in the world doth spend. Um, and like I said, we can we can open with a trochi, right? This is a case. So when you scan this line. It looks like, just to give it to you, uh, it looks like Trochi, Trochi opening, and then it's Imba, 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 Imba. Like I said, this line would probably throw a few people, a few people off, but um, once you understand what's going on, it totally makes sense, right? So next line, shifts, but his place, but still the world enjoys it. Okay, um, so... Step one, let's uh, highlight all the important monosyllable words or shifts, which should give you a clue, guys. If, we, if, the, first, if the first one gets uh, promoted, chances are, not always, chances are we're dealing with a spawn day or something special. Then we got place, right? And then we got world, right? And then step two, we got to look at for the at any multisyllable words. We got one and get the primary stress, which is joys, right? Cool. And then do we have anything for promotion? Well, we do right here. We have light, light, light. So still. Cool, right, guys? So if you break this apart, 
This is what it kind of looks like. Oh, look at that, guys. I, we do have, we do have a hypometrical ending um, too. Okay, I actually, I didn't know this poem had one. I, I thought, I didn't really like, I actually don't scan these ahead of time, guys. Like, I might do a quick read over, but I kind of like doing it live or recorded, like, discover it live. Um, because I, I think it's, I think that's part of the fun. Um, this is a cool line, cool line, okay. Um, so here, I'll, I'll read it. Shifts, but his place for still the world enjoys it. Um, so this is a hypermetrical, the 11, 11 syllables. Now, generally speaking, um, when, when hypermetricals happen, it's usually like an ing ending at the end of the word or an ed ending or something of that nature. It's not its own word. The only time, the only time it's acceptable to use, um, only time is it, it's acceptable to use a separate word at the end of the line, like in this case for hypermetrical ending, is when you're using uh, really weak pronouns, like she, you, it, right, like him. I wouldn't even use that or they. I think that or those or these is a little bit too strong, okay? So a little bit weaker, like personal pronouns. Yeah, so any, any type of personal pronoun, that's, and I would even say singular. I would think with them might be even more a little a little heavy, right? So a singular personal pronoun would probably um, that would be a hypermetrical ending. So that's pretty cool, guys. It's pretty cool. I didn't know we had one of them, um, but you see it, right? You see it. We have eleven syllables, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So uh, we have a trochi, and then we have an imba, 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 and Followed by a hypermetrical ending. Cool, right? That that is the scan. That is this is this scan. It's really cool. I'm glad we have it. Um, uh, but we'll we'll keep that we'll keep that in mind about the personal pronouns. I kind of forgot about that. They don't. Uh, I, I. It's not. It's not as common. Um, and like I said, and then there's times where people, I'm, I'm really serious guys, don't try to stick a word in here that's super strong, like when you do it, like it, like I said, I don't even think an article, really, really it's always been just personal pronouns, I'm not quite sure why it's never articles, or like um, conjunctions, why they don't count that, uh, it looks down upon a little bit, but for some reason personal pronouns like this, totally acceptable, I don't, I don't understand the tradition behind it, uh, but that is the case, so just keep that in mind. Um, Really cool line. Uh, but next line. But beauty's waste hath in the world an end. Okay. So again, step one. Highlight all the important monosyllable words. Where we have waste. Cool. Then we have world. Then we have end. Right. And got to highlight any uh, multi uh, primary stresses and any multisyllable words. Where we got the beau and beauty. Um, now step three. Do we have any promotions? And we do. We have hot in the world. So light, light, light. So it's the in in the middle. Cool. So we break it apart. But beauty's waste hot in the world and end. Nice. Very cool. Very cool, guys. Right? So this is Imber. 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 Really cool. Love it. Great. Awesome. Right? Uh, so, uh, next line, guys, um, and kept unused, the user so destroys it, okay, so, um, step one, we gotta highlight all the important monosyllable words, we have kept, right, um, then step two, we gotta do all the, um, Important, uh, not important, uh, the primary stresses in any multisyllable words. We have three multisyllable words. So we have the used, right? Now, notice what happened. And up here, we had the, this on was primarily stressed. But in this one, this on is not, they, he didn't do it in this one. And that kind of goes to what I said earlier. Um, what was that? Stress is relative, meaning something that is stressed in one line might not be stressed in another, right, if it repeats. So that, that, that's, a, that's a really important lesson. Anyways, back to step two. Uh, the use and user, and then the choice and destroys, right? Uh, 
now we break this apart oh I forgot do we have any promotions we do break this apart we have light 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 so it's the so right that's getting promoted and then we have again we have a hypermetrical ending which makes sense because a hyper uh, a feminine a feminine rhyme is a two two syllable rhyme um, so if um, or with a hypermetrical ending so if this has a hypermetrical ending this would also it would make sense this occurs um, so yeah that that's it so this is just like I said this is imber 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 with a hypermetrical ending pretty cool right next line no love toward others in that bosom sits okay um, and I gotta be careful with this one word here and I'll explain in a bit so step one we have uh, the uh, primary uh, any point in mind syllable words so we have no um, and we have love and we have sits right then we have um, and I'm, I'm gonna talk about one of these words in a second uh, but then we have to ask do we have any um, primary stresses and any multi-syllable words where well, we have the of and we have the booze and bosom, right? And then do we have any uh, promotions? Well, we have this, there's in that, light, light, light. So it's this in. So then we have this break. Now I want to talk about toward for a minute. Um, there are, um, I think it's the UK, but it might be Australia. But I think it's the UK currently. Some people say two word they, they they pronounce this as a two syllable word um if if that is you that this line might have confused you a little bit um this is being pronounced how it is in the u.s toward like it's just a one syllable word in r but i i have seen this in contemporary poems contemporary poems as a two syllable word so i'm i'm fully aware that this might if you are from the uk or australia i don't remember which one you might pronounce this as a two-syllable word totally or hear it as a two-syllable word um totally understand but anyways but we still have the spondy at the opening which is a heavy heavy beat um so no love toward others in that bosom sits so we got a spondy on highlight this we got spondy which is just a heavy heavy and then we got imba 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 Right, that is uh, that is the next foot, uh, next line, and then last line there. That on himself, such murderous shame commits. Um, so we only have one um, important monosyllable word that is shame. Right, we do have a couple uh, multi-syllable words. So we have uh, the mits and commits. Right, uh, the murd, murd and murderous, murderous, and then the self and himself right and then we gotta ask if we have any promotion what well, we do we have light 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 so this on gets promoted and then we break that apart right so on himself that murderous shame commits so it's pretty much I'm burr, you know I'm burr, I'm burr. Uh, so pretty, pretty cool poem, right, guys? This is a, actually a very simple, very easy poem. Um, I'd actually would probably, um, I would probably, like, if, if I was a teacher and there was a poem, I wanted new people to, to learn I am, like, scanning, like I'm doing here, I am a pentameter, I would probably do this on poem nine, all right? Um, this, this is such a great poem for a beginners. The only, the only stumble, and I think it's still a really good lesson, is the, uh, uh, un unthrift uh, right here. I think that would have probably stumbled some people. Like how what's going on here? Um, still, you know, as long as everything I talked about in this opening uh, pretty much came to pass in this. Cool, right? Um, so I wanna I wanna couple couple notes important notes for anyone who's been staying with us. But some two things. Um, one. You can use, um, I don't know, put, uh, you can use, um, I don't put the word carefully. There are some people out there that are not very careful of the meter. 
you can use carefully put that in parentheses um, first uh, first person or um, singular um, is it first person it could be third person I think it's you he she it I'll just say singular pronouns. Okay, for now. So that'd be like she, like I don't even know I. I've seen she. I usually see you. I actually usually it's usually you. Um, so I'm gonna just say uh, pronouns for a hypermetrical ending, right? So you can use carefully. I want I want to stress that. In fact, I'm gonna bold that. You can care, use carefully singular pronouns for hypermetrical endings, right? Um, and this is a really strong ending, right? So, like, you know how I did like that that um, that uh, one, two, three, four thing? Like, this is a four. That's a hard four. Troy's is a hard four, and this is a this is like a if you wanted to be like technical, like probably like a one point five, maybe a one, right? Nowhere near, nowhere near the. Uh, Nowhere near the the four, right? So that's very carefully picked. Um, so that's one, and the two um, negative prefixes. So I'll put like on, right? Can sometimes be assented. I'll put. Uh, Historical stress. Ugh. So, just these are the two big, big things to kind of keep in mind, right? Um, everything else is pretty standard, guys. Uh, so, anyways, I hope you guys have gotten a lot out of this episode. Um, this was a fun one. I think this is a very good one for. Um, like I said, I think that Sonnet Nine is a really good, um, good. Uh, home for new people to meet her to start with after reading through it um so anyways guys um we're going to be doing sonnet 10 next uh i i actually am going to recommend that you start reading read the sonnet 9 do your own scan before watching my scan see what you come up with all right guys so anyways that's all i got for you for tonight i will see you guys on the next video later